Hey guys. Yes, I'm still alive and no. I have no idea what was in the closet. Honestly, it's been pretty crazy since my last post. Sorry I didn't get a chance to respond to any of the comments. Honestly, I freaked out and just ran. I spent a lot of today trying to figure things out and I don't have access to a laptop. Writing this on my phone, so apologies in advance for any typos. To answer some of the questions from last time, I'm currently 18 and live, well, I lived in a pretty crummy apartment above a Chinese laundromat. It wasn't the most ideal setup, but it was cheap and I got my privacy. I left my last foster home pretty much ASAP and have been holding down a couple of jobs trying to keep the bills paid and save up whatever I can to secure myself some kind of future. I'm taking a few courses online too, but that's neither here nor there. Oh, and I'm not married and I've never dated anyone. I haven't had anyone spend the night in the same room as me and it's not like I'm about to tell anyone about the stuff other than the internet. I think that answers everything for now. Anyway, from this point on, I'm going to do my best to recount what's happened since last night. Like I said, I just ran. I don't have a go bag and didn't bother to pack anything. Just grabbed an oversized sweatshirt and whatever was in my purse at the time. Phone, wallet, and keys are honestly the only really important bits. It was still early enough in the evening that there were plenty of people walking around the street so I felt a little safer. But I definitely wanted to get away from whatever might have been in my closet. I knew Shelly, one of my co-workers lived a mile or two towards the middle of town. So I hurried in that direction and called her for better directions to let me in. Shelly had her husband put a kettle on the stove and gave me a blanket. The two of us sat at the dining table in silence for a few minutes before the tea was ready. She asked me if I was okay, but other than that, she didn't ask about any specifics. Which was fortunate for me, because I seriously wasn't in the mood to make something up, much less tell her the truth. I thanked her repeatedly and spent the rest of the evening watching some dumb reality shows with the two of them. I was too messed up to eat much of anything. They said I could take their guest room for the night, but I took the couch. I didn't want to be anywhere near a closet. I spent several hours awake glancing around the room looking for my other mother. I know it might not seem like such a big deal to some of you, but when you get used to something being around every night of your life, it's pretty unnerving one day when it suddenly disappears. I didn't see her at all that night and eventually did wind up passing out, if only for a few hours. You can't imagine how glad I am nothing terrible happened to me that night. I wound up taking today off work and thanked Shelly again for letting me spend the night. I headed back to my place hoping to use the day to look around online for help and just try to relax about everything. Obviously, if things were all hunky-dory, I wouldn't exactly be posting this now. The first thing that hit me was the stench. The damp smell of mold hit me like a surprise ocean wave when I opened the door, and I nearly puked. I covered my mouth with a sleeve and surveyed what was left of my apartment. It was completely trashed. I mean, completely. Not a single thing wasn't broken or tossed around. It was like I was living one of those scenes in a movie where spies are looking for something and destroy the room in the process. Except there was one difference. Everything was soaking wet. Like overnight, my place had flooded. But looking around, none of the walls had any signs of water damage. What's stranger, there were hunks of seaweed and ocean foam strewn around the room and everywhere there was a piece of the thick, slimy green strands a sort of fuzzy black mold had grown. To put this all in perspective, I don't really live anywhere even remotely close to a beach. Solid half-day drive at the very least. Now, I know I'm not the smartest girl out there, but I know mold of that kind of potency, the kind to overwhelm the senses, doesn't just happen overnight. It takes a while. I knew this had something to do with my other mother, but I didn't really have much to go on. So I did what made sense at the time. I called the local police and reported a break-in. 
I won't bore you guys with all the paperwork and time it took to relate my story. I told them I heard something strange and wanted to leave, which is the truth. And they took down Shelly's number to confirm my whereabouts. They assured me they'd look into it, but I don't expect them to find whoever, or whatever, did this. I hope they at least avoid uncovering my history, what with all my psych evals and my parents' deaths. I can't imagine that will help my case. Fast forward to tonight. I've got enough saved up to afford a couple nights in a motel on the outskirts of town. And honestly, all I wanted was a nice hot shower. I don't really know what I'm going to do about the apartment or work, or clothes, but I figure I've got more important things to worry about at the moment, like the fact that my other mother returned tonight. She came much later than usual, around two hours after sunset. In the past, she'd always just appear somewhere in my room when I wasn't looking, standing tall with her hands clasped together or leaning against the windowsill, always with her same crooked smile with her same calming presence and her loving whispers of, I am here. Tonight, though, I saw her appear. She sort of phased out of a slowly growing mist on the floor. She was hunched over, hands and knees on the dirty paisley carpet. She took up the majority of the room considering her height. Thinking about it now, it was the first time I'd ever seen her in any position other than standing. The moss on her back seemed as though it had been disturbed, too. Instead of a bright green, fully covered sort of cloak, it grew in patches here and there, divots after a few rounds of golf. My other mother then began choking on something, and after a few hacks and coughs, she vomited a thick, bluish-green sludge that fizzed upon hitting the carpet. The liquid smelled a bit like a marsh or a lake or something, and once it stopped sizzling, I could see similar bits of seaweed and ocean foam. As I watched in silence, she wiped her mouth with a lengthy arm and struggled to stand before turning to look at me. Upon witnessing her usual smile, I once more felt a wave of protection, a sense of safety within myself. She sighed heavily, as though catching her breath, then began to utter words I'd been longing to hear. I felt it as she spoke. It all happened in one fluid moment. Her eyes rolled into the back of her head and the blanket of warm energy around me flickered. She fell forward and I jumped into motion to try and catch her, but as soon as she hit my figure she disappeared into a cold mist. My clothes felt wet for a brief moment then dried like her footprint puddles I'd seen so many times. I'm currently tucked into the bed under all the covers I could find. I've left the closet door open with the light on. I'm going to have to go buy a few things tomorrow with what I've got, and I'm certainly not staying here another night. I'm hoping to check out the library and see if there's anything there that could help me figure out what's going on. I'm still really worried about my other mother. And whatever the hell she's protecting me from, whatever it is, it doesn't seem friendly. I just wish I knew what this all had to do with me. It's been a couple hours since everything went down and nothing out of the ordinary has happened yet. So I can only hope my other mother has used some of her remaining energy to protect me once more. She may not be here right now, but I think I'm safe. At least for tonight.